Good evening, everyone, to the May 20th, 2021 Ashland School Committee meeting. Uh, I am calling the meeting to order. Uh, this is our annual uh, meeting after the election, and therefore, uh, first want to say welcome to uh, Tina. I want to say it properly, Tina, Fatanities. Yep, you got it. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure I'm good with that. So, Thank um, you. you know, and uh, our newest member, and uh, Kathy Bates is here, but we'll have a moment after that say hi to Kathy. So uh, first thing we need to do is um, do a reorganization of the Ashland School Committee um, after the elections and that way we can then have uh, the chair take over and go through the rest of the agenda, etc. So uh, I will open up um, nominations at this point for a chair uh, to serve for the 21-22 school year uh, for the Ashland School Committee. Any nominations? I'd like to nominate um, our reigning chair, the nine time repeating or whatever it is, <laughs> uh, Lori Tossi to continue serving as the chair. I think things have gone really well. And um, I'd like to nominate Lori. Can I get a second? I would second that. Or uh, that no? uh, any discussion? Uh, Ms. Tosti, first and foremost, are you interested? <laughs> Really? I have to do this again? Well, we got to ask. Uh, no, actually, it's, it would be my pleasure. Um, thank you for the nomination. And yes, of course, if uh, if all of you will, will have it again, okay. I would be more than happy to do it. So we'll take a vote. Um, Mark? Aye. Paul? Aye. Tina? Aye. Aaron? Aye. And Lori? Aye. Okay. <laughs> And I will turn it over now to you to get the vice chair and the secretary taken care of before the rest of the agenda. Thank you. So, yes, we need to fill the vice chair position as well as the secretary. So we'll do vice chair next and I'll be seeking nominations for that. I'd like to nominate Mark Terry. I'll second. Mark, are you willing? I am willing and honored. Thank you both. Okay, then I will just... Make the rounds, Paul Kendall. Aye. Tina Fatanities. Aye. Ka uh, who, Aaron Williams. <laughs> Aye. I'm so used to it. And Mark Terry. Aye. And I for me as well. Thank you. And now who wants the, the fun job? Secretary. Nominate Paul. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that Paul can handle one more, one more responsibility. Well, I mean, I would just be signing my name to all of Aaron Paolini's work, but. Well, first, I guess we should ask, is there anybody who would, would like to uh, volunteer for that position? There never is. <laughs> and I Paul, you've been it, nominated. Yeah. Is, is, is it something that you would consider doing? Should I take votes on that or ask for other nominations? I mean. I'm happy to step up and help out with that as well too. I know Paul has a lot on his plate with the school building committee and lots of other things. So if I can help out in that area, yeah. I'm happy to. That's very nice of you, Tina. I didn't want to have to do like baptism by fire for you for your first <laughs> year, but that that's very good. So I rescind my nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate Tina to be our sec clerk secretary. Second. And then all in favor, Aaron? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mark? Aye. Tina? Aye. And I for me as well. Thank you, Tina. Um, so that's it for now for the boards. Later on in the meeting, we'll have to also uh, figure out who wants to volunteer for signing the warrants, but I'm going to go through the meeting now and uh, we'll take care of that at the end. And hopefully um, there are a couple other people that will remember that I said that we would do that at the end in case <laughs> I need a reminder. I've got yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so on the agenda this evening is, uh, we'll have time for public comment. Our administrative items include the superintendent's update COVID-19. I'm actually realizing I'm looking at the older agenda and I have the newer one right in front of me, so I just need a second to get it up. Okay, COVID-19, and then we have update policy EBCFA face coverings, new state guidelines. Uh, AHS School Improvement Plan and Student Handbook, Pitaway Warren School Improvement Plan, Assistant Superintendent Update, Warren Approvals, and then we have Consent Actions, Approval of Minutes, 
April 15th, April 30th, 2021, minutes of May 6th, 2021, member updates, action items, and then we will adjourn. So I will uh, take attendance, even though I we've already done some business here already, and, and ask you all to just state that you're okay with the order of business this evening. So Aaron Williams? Aaron, yes. Paul Kendall? Not here and yes. <laughs> Tina? Here and yes. And Mark? Here and yes. Okay. And now I will ask if there's anybody here from the public that would like to speak. Um, I would, if that's okay. Of course, Kathy B. Let's, <laughs> let's hear it. Tina, the secretary job, don't worry about it. You, you'll, you'll be a piece of cake. <laughs> um, well, I just wanted to come on and, and say say goodbye, actually. Thank you. Oh, no goodbyes. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll see you later. <laughs> um, so I'm disappointed that I can't sit there and be official um, and be, I, I'll be sad too that um, I won't play an integral role anymore on the school committee. And, but I, I'd like to think that my nine years, I was, I did play an integral role and I had an impact. So I'm happy about that. And I know change is good and this, this will be excellent. Tina will be in, will be a great new member and Mark, I'm glad you are continuing too. So I just wanted to say thanks to everybody and goodbye. Well, see you later. And, um, just also wanted to let you know, um, I did read all the minutes in case anyone is interested. <laughs> minutes, you need, that you need to stay on till the end, girl. Uh, well, they look good to me, if, if anyone cares, except um, on April 15th, there was a member update. And it said, Mr. Kendall was excited about the new um, construction manager for the Mendez School. So... Paul, about anything. So I think you might want to change that one. But that's just my opinion. Fair enough. <laughs> I haven't seen you excited before, huh? No. Is it said, Paul? <laughs> so, He's ending anyway. on that note, Paul. You, you and on that note, I yeah. will say see you later. So, but well, thank well, you very well, much. Well, I, I loved well, being on school committee and uh, being a, a part of that. So I will miss that, but I'm, I'm happy for the nine years I gave and I know change is good and you're, you're in good hands and I am looking forward to all the exciting and things you'll continue to do. So thanks very much, everybody. Well, I mean, don't you go anywhere you. yet. Don't go. Don't go anywhere? Oh, okay. No. I was gonna, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm breaking my own rule oh, where so, I do so, not. So Kathy, uh, Kathy oh. Silva's got her hand up too. Oh. Kathy Silva, yes, you may you may speak. <laughs> I'll wait. Go ahead. Thanks. I just wanted to address Kathy Bates, if you don't mind. Um, because Kathy, you had uh, come to the ASHPAC board meetings as the school committee representative. And I've got to say that I so appreciate your presence at those meetings. Um, I think it really conveyed to ASHPAC the importance that school committee has in terms of their feel for ASHPAC and the role that ASHPAC plays. And certainly from my perspective, your kind of calm, you know, thinking about all of the things that we might be talking about and issues that we were trying to ponder how to do better. Um, it was really a very much appreciated, your perspective, your input, and then of course, how you brought it back to the school committee. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank I you, Kathy. I say Diana as well wants to follow on that. Diana. Yes, I just was here to say the same. Kathy Bates, you've been wonderful to come to all of our meetings and to bring all of our concerns, which at some times um, we um, have strong opinions. And we thank you for coming and listening and engaging with us and bringing all of those concerns back to the committee so that we can have our you know, voice heard um, by the wider community and, and feel like our concerns um, and, you know, our, our things that go positively that they're all conveyed um, to the school committee and the administration. Um, we, we definitely thank you for all of the time and the um, consideration that you have brought to the committee over the years. So thank you very much and congratulations and enjoy the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Very nice. Thank you. Diana. Thank you, Kathy. So I'm going to break my own rule. I, I usually don't talk to people who've given public comment. 
So this will never happen again, but I'm making an exception for you after nine years of serving as my close colleague uh, and my longest standing colleague on this committee. Yeah. And certainly uh, a long time ago, we became friends in, in addition to colleagues, Kathy. And um, oh God, where's Paul Kendall with his tissues? If we were at a meeting, <laughs> I would be crying. He would hand me a tissue. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I, we're gonna have an offline opportunity to celebrate you, but I do want the public to hear um, that, uh, how much uh, we appreciate you. Um, you brought so much to the committee in terms of like your personality, the way you approach things, your intelligence, um, your attention to detail, your willingness to always step up, um, the way that you care about students. You never had an agenda other than trying to do the best thing. Um, you did, if, if there's ever any doubt, Ashpack, she brought back all of your concerns all the time. She took them very seriously as she did her role on every um, thing that she volunteered with in the past nine years and uh, was part of a lot of big decisions that uh, are helping to move the district forward. And those things don't happen without you know, every single person involved in that from all of you administrators who come up with the ideas and put things together and put plans together and every single person that votes on them and Kathy were a huge part of all of that. And I hope that you're proud of your work. Um, and it's been an honor to get to know you. I, I know that you'll be back. I know that we will be in touch, but I just hope the community, um, you know, understands how much of yourself that you gave over the past nine years. And I really, I'm gonna miss you. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, I'll miss yeah. everyone. But thanks, thanks for breaking the rule and talking. <laughs> 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 but thank you everyone, I really, I appreciate it. So have a great meeting and um, I will see you soon. Well, Enjoy your Thursday nights. I will. Wait, thank you. Wait, Paul. Do you wait? Say something to you. So, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Paul. So, I mean, I think what we're losing when you step away is probably the best listener in the bunch. Uh, uh, you know, you know, you brought such a, an evenness, and she was the best note taker. She would come to, with the Ashback note, and she would say, "This is what they said in the meeting," and she would bring back literally every single thing. We have a policy subcommittee meeting; she'd be there, and and she's always at a disadvantage in those meetings too, because Jim and I would meet, and I would put some things down on paper, but because of open meeting law, and there's only two people in the subcommittee, I can't share it with her until the meeting, and. Uh, she was so, just so good and thoughtful uh, and absorbent with all that stuff. And just, you know, and you're always so humble. I can't tell you how many times I had to say, you know, you, you did add a lot of value to something because you won't accept that as, as, as praise. Uh, and so you, you were very humble, the best listener in the group. And you just, you, you brought such a calm and even demeanor to everything. So appreciate it. And we'll miss that. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> I, I, I got you on WACA the other night, so I'll leave. Yeah, you did, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we'll be seeing you. We're yeah. going to make. Oh, we'll, a we'll see you soon. Yeah. And th thank yeah. you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Appreciate you know. Well, I'll cry too. I'll cry too much if I try to do this right now. Yeah. No. 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 It's fine. So we'll thank you, everybody. Perfect. Have a great meeting and um, carry on. I know. Great things will be happening. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Bye bye. Um, and before we get on to the rest of the agenda, a very warm welcome to you, Tina. Um, we're happy to have you and uh, looking forward to uh, getting to know you better and you getting to uh, be part of the committee. And so, for the community watching, and I think all the admins here know who you are probably by now. And I know you've been on other committees before and participated in lots of things around town. Um, but we are, are happy to have you, happy to introduce you to everybody, and we look forward to what's next. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks. All right, folks. So next up, we have the superintendent's no, update. Sorry. More public what? comment. If oh, is there more public comment? I'm sorry. I'm say Bob, I just in case. Yep, I would like to say something. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Hi. Karen. Karen, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Um, uh, go ahead. I just, I just wanted to 
bring up one uh, bit of feedback that I have. Um, I know that the mask covering is on the agenda for tonight. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. We lost you, Karen. Yeah, I think she was having audio problems there for a second. Oh. Is there anyone else who wants to give public comment to give Karen a minute? Karen, if you can hear me, if, if you get yourself back online, I'll take your comment later, if that happens. Um, I think I'll just move along, but if you come back, I, I will take your comment. Sound good, everybody? Okay. Jim, do you wanna start with the COVID update? Sure. Um, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen here uh, with our weekly uh, COVID dashboard. Uh, what you'll notice is everyone see that all right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what you'll see is we've had zero cases um, since last week, uh, and our, we continue again to to drop um, significantly. If you go back to the April fifteenth timeframe, uh, right in here, um, or the middle of April, uh, right before after break, uh, we've continually been been on the decline. Um, you know, percentage-wise across the Commonwealth, uh, everywhere, all the metrics are are continuing to to show that um, the positivity rate, as well as the number of cases of itself, uh, are are on the decline uh, within the Commonwealth and obviously uh, locally in Ashland as well. So, um, really, the only thing I can share is that uh, the. The pool testing at the high school again yesterday or uh, on Tuesday came back again negative, which was great news again. Um, you know, and we've got about, I don't know, Audrey, three more Mondays, maybe four more Mondays left uh, or Tuesdays, excuse me, or three more to, to run our pool testing, which is great. Um, but it, it's getting more efficient. Um, and uh, the, the nurses I stop in right after on, on Tuesdays, I try not to get there while they're doing it. So I have to help out, but usually I pop in right after they're all done. Um, and, uh, and they said each day, uh, each Tuesday, it's getting a lot more efficient. So um, the students that are quarantined, uh, there, there are folks that uh, are uh, positive within households. Um, so uh, that's, it's actually one, one child per school uh, across the district right now uh, that's quarantined. Um, so any questions on this? Again, we've, we've been through this, this spreadsheet over and over, uh, since last, uh, since August. Uh, but this is the best it's ever looked. Uh, last week I said the same thing, uh, but this is even better because there are zero cases. Jim, is this the just one week? question for you um, sure. on the athletics? Yep. Are those numbers updated as well? As of this? Yes. As of five o'clock today. Yep. There. Okay. I'm well, just noticing that, you know, obviously the trends are, um, you're blocking part of the, uh, sorry, screen. yeah, no, no, that's me. Um, I was too, <laughs> mine, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sorry, some of the other communities, yeah, higher, and, and it's good to see them all coming down too. They are, yep, yep. Paul, uh, Paul I think you said something, yep. Yeah, is, is this the first week that had zero? Yes, yep, zero? yeah, last week was six. It was last week's numbers were six cases in 12 over 14 days. This was the first of zero and six. Yep. And and I assume those those students that are quarantined, they're kind of towards the end of the quarantine because that those cases must have been over so, a week old, right? So these cases, the open cases um, that you refer right here, is that what you're referring to? You, you said we have we have five students. Yeah, well, so one of them correct members must be. This must be the tail end of their quarantine. It could be. I don't. I don't have that in front of me. But yeah, I mean, we have. It was a household. And I mean, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't yeah. be seven days zero. That's right. right. Yep. Yep. And some of them we sent home uh, because of of symptoms, and so. Okay. Yep. So obviously, contextually, there's nothing changing, right? Um, uh, we're we're back full in person learning next week um, and uh, continuing on with our pool testing uh, as we've uh, been doing. Um, so so any further questions on with regard to the the, the dashboard? 
like I said, I, I think it's probably our, I don't know, 40th week doing it. So <laughs> um, right. And, and probably the best one so far. So uh, that's it is. Yep. Um, so that's that. So okay. the next, yep. we move on. Yeah. yeah. So the next piece um, is dealing with, uh, as is typical at the state level, on Tuesday, uh, the governor and the commissioner decided to uh, change the, the, the playing field again, uh, or Monday, I guess it was, um, where the movement away from masks uh, outdoors uh, for athletics, uh, for activities outside, recess, et cetera, um, was uh, a, um, on Monday, they said starting Tuesday, it was no longer required. Uh, obviously, we have a policy, uh, the EBCFA face covering policy that um, the school committee voted on that needs to be looked at and uh, modified and, uh, and approved uh, modifications, if, if that's what you so choose to do. Um, so we can follow along with MIAA, the uh, Department of Education, as well as the governor's, um, excuse my dog there, uh, the, the governor's um, new guidelines that he put up. Now, starting May 29th, it, it's almost as though, um, you know, COVID doesn't exist anymore uh, for those um, who are, you know, following along with the governor. It's like sort of opening everything up uh, in terms of um, unlimited capacities, um, et cetera. Uh, and then June 15th, uh, the executive order, initial emergency executive order seems to be going away. But that being said, I, we're here to focus on the face covering. Uh, I did share uh, with you, I'm going to pull it up. Um, modifications that I've I've run through our administrative team um, to hopefully reflect where we believe we can go and should be uh, after the changes made by the Department of Ed, as well as the governor and how and the MIAA. Um, so let me just share that with you. <clears throat> and let's see. Is that big enough or do you want me to make it a little bigger? Works big enough for me. me. Yeah. Okay. So what you'll notice is obviously the, the red, this is the red line version. So it's, it's really taking our old policy that was approved at the beginning of the school year and making some adjustments based on uh, the uh, commissioner and the governor and MIA um, guideline changes. Um, so basically what we're asking is the school committee uh, to, to, change the requirement of, of mask or facial coverings outdoors. So during breaks, during recess, during lunch, that's outdoors only, participating in outdoor learning activities, participating in outdoor athletics, uh, school staff when a minimum of three feet of physical distance can be maintained are not required to wear coverings either. Uh, and spectators at outdoor athletic events when a minimum of three feet of physical distance between household groups uh, can be maintained or not required to wear um, face coverings. Um, and that really is the essence of the changes that would pull us in alignment with, uh, sorry, it looks weird now, um, oh, there. Uh, in alignment with those three bodies, but also, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the, the athletic directors in the Tri-Valley League uh, also met, and, and we feel comfortable that this would fall in line with the athletic directors and the uh, TVL policies. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So I will open it up for comments, questions, uh, adjustments, uh, but that's the frame of reference here is, is this is really adjusting the policy to meet uh, the guidelines that were just placed, um, put into place on Monday. Hey, hey Jim, if you can, <clears throat> why don't you also have at the ready the FAQ from Desi yeah. uh, for if there if there's a need to reference it we'll have it. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me see. I'll pull that up. Yeah. Oh. Jim, I had I mean I had one comment which I shared with you um, <clears throat> by email earlier in the day, and that's that the way that second paragraph reads, or at least the way I'm reading it, I should say, it says unless otherwise noted within this policy, face covering that covers the nose and mouth must be worn by all individuals in school buildings, on school grounds, and on school transportation, 
even when social distancing is observed, then it, it has these not required in these limited circumstances. And what I think that I think the way that means or the way I would interpret it is if you're a student and you drive to the high school or you're at a young, you know, younger, younger age and you're getting dropped off by, by somebody else, you're walking from wherever you get dropped off to into the building. You're supposed to have your face mask on in that circumstance because it's not during a mask break, during recess, during lunch, outdoors, et cetera. Um, and so it feels like the on school grounds phrase in that paragraph creates a scenario that probably isn't intended and that it means that if you're outdoors on school grounds, but you're not doing one of the five bulleted things, um, you're just hanging out after school, talking to some friends, then you should be wearing your mask. And I don't think that's our, that would be the intent of this or the intent of the state guidance. I, I would um, agree with you. Yeah. So I, I guess it would make sense to me to remove the phrase on school grounds in that context, um, or maybe yeah, it needs to be outdoors. I mean, that, that's really what I'm trying to get at is the outdoor portion, not-, not but just, So you're just saying let's right? strike the on school grounds component. Right, from, 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 the, comma from, to, from the comma to the end in between yep. there. Just, just strike that. Yeah, that addresses the concern. Yep. Everybody okay with that? Fix? Yep, that sounds reasonable. Other comments for discussion about this? And, and yes, Jim, I'll pick up that change. Thank you. Is that what you're texting me? <laughs> you just texted that? <laughs> no, I didn't text you. I was writing it down on my notepad. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. So we, we do need a vote to, to adopt the uh, adjustments to the policy. So and I can um, share that with the community after. So I'll make a motion that we amend policy EBCFA face coverings as, well, it's not as presented, it's as amended. Right. But you got two amendments in there. So um, about to try it this way. I move to modify policy EBCFA face coverings as amended. Second. Did we lose Lori? We did. No. Mark? <laughs> I share. I'll, uh, I'll jump on the uh, grenade here. Um, so all right, any further discussion? No. Okay. I'll call for the vote, uh, Aaron. Did we lose Aaron? Yeah. Oh, there she is. There she is. Tina? Yes. Paul? Yes. And yes for me. And we'll just note Lori is temporarily absent. Okay. Uh, moving to the next item on the agenda. Right, uh, Jim, did you have anything else in your update? No, um, nope. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the um, AHS School Improvement Plan and Student Handbook. Yeah, I just, yeah. Um, before I turn it over to Kelly, I just want, um, the only thing that she will be presenting tonight is the uh, school improvement plan from the high school. The handbook, there, uh, the handbook committee is still working, uh, and they will be ready to present by uh, the last meeting in June. Is that right, Kelly? That's correct. Okay, great. So I will turn it over to you. I think you are a co-host. If you want to share anything, or if you just want to walk through the document, um, everyone should have that. Um, I could share it as okay. well. I can remember how to do that. Is it shared? It is. You may just want to make um, it a little bit bigger, Kelly, please. Well, that's something I remember how to do. Uh, over here where it says 100%. <laughs> there you I can't see where you're pointing. On the, I know on the left-hand side up above where the it says 100%. Yeah, you go. You can just right down. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thanks. Yep. Because that. Better for better. my old eyes, but I don't know about everybody else. It works for me. It's fine. Everybody else okay? Yeah, <laughs> it progresses on. I can't see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is um, the third year of a three-year school improvement plan that we put into place 
um, if you'll recall, um, at the beginning of the 2019 school year. Um, and our school improvement plan, um, you know, as well as being tied to the district goals, are also tied to our NEASC accreditation. Um, so part of this plan, um, the, the entire of this plan was part of our um, collaborative conference um, goals. Um, we had our collaborative conference for accreditation in May of 2018, um, and then developed this plan um, as our action items based on their recommendations moving forward. Um, so where you see uh, principle um, after some of our actions, that refers to um, the standards and principles that we meet for accreditation through NEASC. Um, we were, um, we did have our visit from NEASC in December of this year, as I know I shared with this uh, committee earlier, um, and we're fully accredited, so we're excited for that. Um, but a lot of what we're working on in this plan, um, some of it did come to a halt, so we have recommendations that we'll continue to work on um, over the coming year and in the future. Um, so I'll just go through um, the four improvement priorities and highlight um, the narrative piece is uh, some of the things that we have done over the last two years. Um, and I can highlight uh, the things that we'll continue to work on the next year and then moving forward after that. So uh, the first improvement priority continues to be we will ensure AHS student faculty and student faculty and staff uh, success, um, you know, focused on emotional uh, health and well being. Um, the highlights there are things, dates that I adjusted and, and uh, slight wording changes we made um, for things that have been in progress so that we've moved forward. Uh, but really, uh, the bulk of this work um, was done in working groups over the last two years, um, and the outcome was developing our X block schedule, which we had intended to pilot last um, fourth term. Um, so now we're moving forward with, um, we will have that schedule starting in September, knock on wood, uh, when we come back. Um, so, you know, to look at the narrative piece of that, our, um, we had several working groups that were doing the work to um, look at ways to um, look at hard at interventions for students. We were uh, focusing on um, kind of aligning some, aligning some of our um, grade reporting workload across um, departments, um, looking at different learning environments for students, et cetera. Um, increasing some of our PD, um, team building was a focus that we've been talking about. Um, so all things that we hope to implement and work into our x block schedule um, next year. Um, one of the pieces of that was also to, um, that I don't think we've met yet, is integrating coaches and outside uh, role models, um, and we will continue to work uh, moving forward on that next year. Um, still some highlights there. Um, one of the things that I added in here was this year, um, as you know, we did a lot of work on um, equity. Um, so I added some of that language to this area. Um, we will be uh, this summer engaging in some anti-bias training with faculty that will then be carried forward with staff um, and then a group of peer leaders um, so that we can move that into part of our curriculum as well um, starting next school year. Well, can I just have you, I don't know if you got into this, but just for anybody who's paying attention at home, can you just explain a little bit more detail what the X block really is? Definitely. Um, so the X block is a, it's going to be for us a half hour time, four out of the five days of the week um, where students can receive intervention and extra help if needed. Um, and students can receive enrichment. Um, teachers will be offering a variety of different activities um, that um, hopefully will expand on some of the things students are learning in class. Um, and so the goal would be every Monday, students um, will pick um, the activities they want to engage in. They will already, when they go into the software we're using um, to choose activities, they will see if they had been assigned by teachers. Teachers will have the ability to pre-assign students to at least two days a week of, um, you know, if a student needs to make something up or if a teacher feels like um, they'd like to provide extra assistance for a student. 
um, that students will be pre-assigned to those and will not be able to override those um, assignments. Um, and then they'll be able to look and see, you know, what are other opportunities available to me? Um, am I really interested in learning about the makerspace and maybe there's an activity happening in there one day? Um, do I not have any kind of study hall or uh, free time built into my day on a certain day and, you know, we'll have opportunities like just open gym or um, some, you know, uh, places for downtime. Um, one of the things we're doing spaces um, is something that's mentioned. We're taking one of our computer labs, which we um, no longer use in the way we have in the past um, to create a space where we can um, provide opportunities for mindfulness and downtime um, for students that will be off the library. So uh, students will be able to sign up for a variety of um, locations and activities during that time. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions on that one? Um, our second improvement priority is to continue to work um, on college and career readiness, um, providing equitable and challenging opportunities. Um, so some of the things that we have done um, in that area is really work um, on you know, looking at our curriculum as a whole. One of our goals uh, for many, many years and, and part of our NEAS goal is to really um, have a living uh, curriculum document. Uh, so that is ongoing work that uh, teachers are continuing to do. Um, and I think that's one of the areas that NEAS asked for us to improve. Uh, and certainly our teachers feel that, um, you know, using the word living document, we're always, um, adjusting the curriculum document, documents and, and revising. Um, so that will continue to move forward. Um, some of the big work we did um, over the last two years um, was our vision of the graduate. Um, so that is a, a new, uh, new expectation um, with me ask. Not only do we have core values that we're living, but we really have a vision for where we want all of Ashland's graduates to go. Um, so we had um, done some surveys, uh, had some faculty do some, some working group work on that area and had a vision of the graduate um, ready to roll out. This year was not the year to do that. So that'll be a big part of what we do next year. Um, and we've already had a lot of conversation um, in terms of um, you know, getting back to the core values, um, kind of rebuilding our culture after a very different year this year. So it'll be, it'll be a good time to kick off the vision. Um, you know, we certainly want to increase opportunities um, for students outside of the classroom to be both college and career ready. So um, you know, we actually didn't think we'd be able to this year, but did find some opportunities for students to have some of those in-school college and career presentations um, using local community members and alumni. <laughs> and um, it's always an ongoing going goal of ours to increase um, common planning time. Um, last year, we piloted um, having some teachers um, that teach different levels, but the same subject area, um, 11th grade English. Um, have common planning time and um, meet it during common times. The classes met so that we could bring them together and do some cross um, level work with students. Um, let's go down to the narrative. Um, so I think I, I touched on some of this, um, the English department along with some of the work they did last year with working across levels. Um, we'll now be piloting. We've had some discussions around equity over the last couple of years about our two different CP levels. Um, so we'll be starting next year with um, not having CP1 and CP2 at the senior level, um, especially um, with the, the vast number of our students that do want go on to the college level, preparing them for that. Um, and um, again, increasing some of our college, um, our career um, seminars that we do for our students, adding that into um, at a higher level than we have been doing now. Um, but that's one of the areas we did um, through Zoom this year, and it worked really well. So we're excited to bring people in in person next year. Um, I think that's it for that one. I don't know if anyone has any questions on priority two. Anybody have any questions for Kelly thus far? And, and Lori, Lori is back, I think. Oh, okay. 
I, I will return the gavel to Lori. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mark. I, I apologize. I got uh, we've got too many people trying to take classes and do work and do Zoom all at the same time. We all got dropped, but I'm back and hopefully we'll stay. But I'm not sure. Um, so our third priority area was all around um, connections with the community. Um, continue to find ways to collaborate with um, um, with our students and, and their caregivers as well as community members. Um, so again, that tied with what we were just talking about um, with adding some more college and career readiness to our curriculum. Um, you know, on the flip side, working with uh, bringing in more guest speakers to um, talk to students about careers. Um, this was another area um, that uh, we had a working group that was um, paused during the pandemic, but we will be kicking off. We were looking internally at our communication and how we could improve that. Um, and I know that's a district-wide goal, so we'll continue to follow that um, as we look at what we we had talked about before the pandemic and then um, what, you know, what the district is looking at. Um, and uh, continue to work with groups such as the Ashland Business Association. You know, I was excited we were actually able to continue to provide a couple internship opportunities to for students even during the pandemic. So um, I think um, you know we have an excellent um, curriculum and, and course offerings here at the high school, but want to increase our opportunities to get our students out there and have some real life learning activities. So that's priority three. If anyone has any questions. Questions, comments? Um, and then our final priority area was around, um, you know, attracting and developing and retaining um, highly qualified educators. Um, some of the things that we um, have been focusing on is making sure that um, our educators have opportunities um, to do work and professional development um, in their areas of expertise. Um, we did a lot of work over the last uh, two, three years in encouraging peer observation, um, you know, working with our teachers to observe each other within the building, um, whether it was in department or across departments. Um, we offered opportunities for teachers to go um, and see counterparts in other districts, um, especially some of our teachers that teach singletons. Um, you know, our, our departments always participate in the hiring of staff and helping to recruit staff. Um, we participated in the DESE program of the teacher signing day of um, really encouraging our students um, to enter the field of teaching and have had some conversations um, this year as actually part of our equity uh, PD on how we can increase um, it and reach out to our students and um, encourage them to join uh, the teaching field. Um, so that's where we are with that one. Um, and any questions on that? Hey Kelly. Yep. Just a, just a comment here from my lens. That I was writing a note as well as as probably as the school committee and I and, and the rest of um, the administration think about our summer plans uh, in terms of our retreat for the school committee. Uh, you know, thinking about the hiring practices as well uh, of a more diverse um, and um, staff and and that's really going to be part of that conversation about hiring of of highly qualified individuals so yeah and it was a good conversation we actually had in one of our pds that it needs to you know start well before um well before we're ready to hire um we had a young man who was one of our student teachers this year who said it's you guys that need to make it He's, you know, he was four years out of high school and he said, it's you guys that need to really talk about it when, when we're sitting in front of you for four years of high school right. to help recruit us. Great. Other questions or comments? So uh, maybe just a, a general one, Kelly, about uh, how has this year and its differences and challenges impacted uh, the, the plan, what the uh, site council is able to do and 
and whether stuff that this site council started is going to carry over, you know, the, can you speak to what, if any, impacts uh, it's had on the work you've been able to do in general or, or, or just, you know, what's things that you wish you were able to do with the site council that uh, this year has presented challenges to do and things that might carry over to next year? I think um, it, it paused a lot. Um, you know, everything was put on hold, especially since um, so much of what we were planning um, was built into some schedule changes that we were going to implement. Um, so that that was the biggest impact on this year. Um, but we certainly had um, several conversations on what were some things, um, some takeaways from this year that we look forward to incorporating into what we're going to start next year, what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think you en ended up answering it better than I said it, but yeah, those things that you probably wanted to do at the beginning and then had to had to shift with the site council and, and it sounds like you're, you're keeping track of those and carrying them forward. So that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Uh, Jim, you're muted. I, no, I think it's, it's really good, Kelly, that you, you touched on the scheduling component, right? I mean, we totally shifted what our schedule, our day-to-day -day schedule for students looks like right. uh, at the high school and the middle school this year, moving to the, you know, the four by four block, if you will, for, for a quarter of the year uh, each or, you know, in segments. So certainly made some of the challenges with your X block and things of that nature uh, really difficult to, to pull off this year. And, and having a lot of kids potentially be remote and, right. and hybrid model and so. It made it abundantly clear to us that we need to have time built into the day to, to be able to work with students for yeah. additional support. So we learned something. And enrichment, that. yeah. Right. right. Other questions or comments? All right, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, I'm uh, seeing a couple of weeks. Thank you. All right, next up we have the Pittaway Warren School Improvement Plan. Thank Lori, you. Do we, before you do that, do we, need to, do we need to approve that? I forgot yes. whether what, what we approve the site. Um, I, I think we just review it, right? Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. The law in that mark says the superintendent approves after consulting with the school committee. So the, the, the approval really rests on Jim, um, although, you know, certainly we uh, we are able to provide input. And required to review. I mean, part of yes. the MGL says if 30, if we present it to you in 30 days and you don't say anything to us, it's automatic. You don't, we don't have to bring it back to you. But. Right. We're not, the school committee well, doesn't we don't need do to that. take a vote. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to vote our approval, but we do need to provide feedback. Sure. So you've had your feedback on that one. Um, and we don't need to take a vote. So we can move on to you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Share my screen. To begin with, I'm gonna scroll quickly through. I'd just like to first acknowledge our council members. Um, our, our council members this year that you can see here on screen, like our students, our staff and our families showed great flexibility this year as back in uh, March of 2020, when everything just stopped of our, our normalcy. And they quickly pivoted and started to look at how can we reach out to our families and our staff to figure out what people need and how they can be most helpful. Uh, so again, this group of individuals, um, great praise to them and thanks for their continued support, whether it was our reopening plan or our day-to-day -day work of trying to figure out how do we improve the education process for our students. Uh, one great example to speak about is at the Warren School specifically, and a lot of this has to do with the age of our children, is the fa family involvement. Uh, and that was a large challenge once we closed our doors and did not allow visitors into our buildings. Um, the site council worked closely together to survey our staff and our students to figure out what people would like and what people needed. Um, and then as we had a plan put in place, the rules changed yet again, and we were welcoming everyone back into school, and they recognized that they needed to slow that down a little uh, to give teachers the time that they needed now by having full classrooms. Uh, but again, just the work of this group was outstanding throughout the year. Um, our goals, and, and Paul, as you mentioned, we needed to shift quite a bit. Our goals that we planned on having at the end of last school year, some of them needed to stay on hold because they just didn't fit with our, our new way of doing school. 
with the hybrid model in our remote learning academies. And we shifted our work. And as I just mentioned, it shifted to more of saying, how do we support our families um, and our students for this new way of school? Um, our first goal of how we're moving forward is to really continue to work on the school that began back in June of 2017, creating a positive engaging learning environment for our students and staff to flourish. Um, our PBIS whole school assemblies um, were not implemented this year. We did some different things through Zoom meetings, through Google Meets um, as the year progressed and we did not use Zoom with students. And then also some video options that we had as well. So students, students still could showcase and share our core values of being kind, safe, responsible, respectful. Our responsive classroom training has continued. Um, and we are at the place where this summer we will have all of our staff at the Warren School will be trained in responsive classroom and they work with our PBIS committee to combine these two strategies to improve the well-being of our students. Um, in addition, we're looking to do more work with our staff on the personal side with each other. Um, our staff is participating in development of staff development surveys as well, where they're giving us feedback about what's working well and where they still see that we need additional supports um, to be moving forward. Um, this year, we were not able to have common planning time for teachers to be able to work together due to the challenges of new schedules being created. Uh, part of that was typically a first grade team, half of the team, so five of the 10 teachers will have their, their prep at the same time, meaning that the students will be going to art, music, library, and so forth at the same time. This year, due to the pandemic, we shifted our schedules so that there wasn't as much crossing over. And our Unified Arts worked in seven week cycles. Um, so we will be returning to this and we're excited about how we'll be able to continue our work focusing on, on student growth plans and looking at specifically what students need. Um, as well, our hope is that we'll be able to return to whole school assemblies. Any questions of goal one? In goal two, our continued implementation of our literacy program. Our literacy program is units of study. Um, some people you'll hear it referred to as Lucy Calkins. Um, and she's the author of this program. Uh, and it's also about taking our next steps in our math program and investigating our math program to determine what are our next steps to support mathematical growth, growth for our students. Um, one of the large gaps that our committee did identify with the units of study is the lack of phonics instruction. So we have initiated a foundations phonics program for all students K to two. And I'm very excited to share that training will be occurring for classroom teachers over the next few weeks before the school year ends. Um, and the remaining staff members and new staff members will be trained in the fall immediately. Our math program is outdated and it is time to revamp and we are now at a place where reading and writing will be in year two of that implementation. Social emotional learning, we're now year three of that program. Uh, so we will be able to now tackle math as well. And that's where you can see the start dates of November and ending in June. Um, as far as, as where we are, the units of study lessons, although we have had a year of implementation now, there have been some adjustments based on the pacing and that was due to the hybrid model and, and how um, students were responding to some of the instruction of lessons that didn't work as well remotely and some lessons that worked extremely well remotely and how we can utilize and leverage that for our future as well. Any questions on goal two? Hey, can I just ask a quick question? Um, it's it's kind of around the, the data collection around and when implementing the new curriculum. So presumably, you know, the district decided to implement the new reading curriculum in order to strengthen student literacy and certain goals that they were hoping the curriculum would meet. So I'm just curious what the metrics are to measure the success of the curriculum chosen. Uh, so or, or is it looking at kind of the success of students within the program or were there certain things measured before implementation that will then kind of be looked at at certain intervals to make sure it's meeting its goals? Right, great question, Tina. And that's one of the nice pieces. Um, we're not using assessments that are built into the units of study program. And we're using assessments as part of our assessment battery that we've been using for the last few years. So we can actually compare an apple to an apple here and look at our student growth from the journeys program that we were using um, to now the implementation of the units of study. And then also, and, and one of the more important pieces for us is that phonics instruction piece. Uh, up until this point, our phonics instruction has been very weak. 
and it's been inconsistent. And this will allow for a scientific-based program that will allow for the fidelity of all classrooms. Again, back to your original question, the data that we will be collecting, and it is slightly different in some of the different grade levels for the individual tools that are used, uh, but that will give us the data to look over the years to see what the immediate impact is and what the long-term growth is for our students. So or, or was data collected in terms of kind of phonics skills before and phonemic awareness skills before starting to implement foundations so that we can track that as well too? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I, um, it's a little twist too, I think to Tina's point. Uh, the one thing I've asked as well, Tina, for uh, the principals, especially K-5, uh, is that, that we get a baseline as well of our, the students who were remote learners and the students who were hybrid learners this year and to determine where uh, in the continuum where each child really, how much they learned, what their progress was. So that data should be coming forth to the school committee as well over the next couple of meetings, hopefully. Um, we'll be able to, you know, at least give up a, a, a really high level view of, of the students who we're fully remote and getting that one-to-one -one all day long, uh, every day in remote environment versus the hybrid model. So, um, so we should hopefully have some of that information as well. And, and maybe I'll piggyback on, on Tina's uh, good question there, because so obviously this year has thrown a curveball to everything, right? So, um, how long do you think it's going to take to be able to determine? cause and effect with the assessments, right? So we, we started implementing something, um, but multiple things changed dramatically uh, in that time frame, right? So uh, how long do you think it's gonna take to be able to fit, you know, kind of weed out the cause and effect in, uh, of, of those things? It's gonna probably take a, a couple of years, I would imagine. I, I, I'm trying to understand, you know, we, we did, we started this thing and now, you know, during that implementation, uh, we also, you know, had had a pandemic and remote learning and a whole bunch of other things thrown in the mix. And so that, that trying to evaluate it probably is going to be tough, I would imagine. The, the good news is of being at the Warren School where we have our, our learners starting in kindergarten. Um, our kindergarten, there is no different, although they did experience the pandemic, it did not stop their schooling. That being said, it impacted preschools, it impacted a lot of other learning activities that our students did not have. So we'll adjust some of the way that we need to teach cooperation um, where students have not had that practice. But the good news about the data that you're speaking of, Paul, is at the end of this year, we'll be able to cleanly look at our kindergarten data and say, students before foundations and the units of study were performing at this level. Now with these strategies, here's what their performance level is. And then in the next part, our first graders by year two, um, they will not have instruction in any other format. So for the Warren School within three years, we'll be able to cleanly look at all of that data and be able to see the direct impact of these adjustments. Yeah, I, I think uh, if I if I may add here, I think three years is probably the right way of looking at this to see how we've done. Um, obviously, when you think about the older kids in particular, they've they've had this uh, new instruction that that's coming at them from third grade to fourth grade, but it was so intermittent because of the way COVID impacted that instruction and in the newness of the program in general. Um, but one thing I think we can really look at is how how are our kindergarten students and our first grade students doing, especially the kids next year. I think I think those students really will be uh, students that we want to look at that data because they'll get, they'll have the benefit of hopefully being live and in person with, with teachers who have now been teaching um, the units of study for two years, as well as the introduction of foundations. So that's, that's going to be a great class to look at to see how our success grows over time. Um, and I, I just wanted to make sure too that we mentioned that, you know, in terms of the assessment, the, the, the major assessment tool we, we do utilize to measure the growth is the benchmark assessment system from Fontas and Pinnell. So that the, the data that we see from the BAS is really going to help us to determine how our students are doing and, and growing in the area of reading. Uh, and, and right now too, we, we utilize um, iReady at the three through five level. So obviously, you know, Mrs. Bennett is not presenting this student improvement, school improvement plan today. Uh, we do not use that um, assessment data at the, at the K to two level, but that's another data point for us 
to see efficacy in terms of how how we are doing and how our students are growing. So that's another data point we'll be able to look at. Uh, just wanted to make sure I, I added that piece. And one other thing too, I think it will be important, you know, as kind of assessing the efficacy of how well this curriculum is meeting its goals is to look also at how the current kindergarten, first, second graders are doing when they hit third and fourth grade, because that's typically the point where you see reading difficulty. So, you know, while these kids may be doing well in, in, in you know, hitting their benchmarks in first, second, first and second grade, if they get to third and fourth and they're not, I think it's important to kind of look at why, um, if that's if that's the case. Just, you know, something I think that's an, another important data point to, to pay attention to. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I also think that, you know, we, we didn't have the benefit of, of some other data points that we would normally be looking at as well. I mean, for instance, MCAS, we did not take that last year. So we were not able to measure the immediate impact of the program and its efficacy in year one, because our, our fourth grade students and our third grade students who normally would be taking that for the first and second time didn't didn't. Um, they didn't take it. So this year we'll have to be able to take a look at, at how our students are doing and then we can measure that growth over time as well. Um, and, and I, you know, just anecdotally speaking, it was, it was fantastic the other day after the first round of, of ELA MCAS, uh, we had some fourth grade teachers stop us to say that they had never seen students uh, seem more confident and uh, attack the MCAS like they had done this year, which was really, uh, it, it was it was heartwarming to hear because we were certainly afraid because of COVID what might be happening. But they said that they felt, they truly felt like the students were more prepared this year and more confident than they ever had been before, is specifically in the area of writing, uh, which was really impressive. So I was happy to hear that. And, and we'll see, we'll see if uh, the data matches that anecdotal note, but I, I look forward to seeing you know, what our students, how our students were able to perform when we get those results. I would just like to add anecdotally, like I'm so excited to see the progress of um, foundations and how that works for our students, because that's the um, that's the curriculum that I purchased to homeschool Griff this year. And I took a very reluctant, um, very behind reader from COVID um, and uh, and believe me, he does not like me as a teacher. So it's not the teacher, but it is absolutely like the curriculum. Um, it is such a good fun, uh, the way it grows on itself um, and some of the memorization, I think um, a lot of curriculums have lost memorization as a key. And um, I just think it's been phenomenal and I can't wait to, uh, it, it also is just gonna help the language of the actual curriculum um, and being able to have that continuity between the teachers year after year, um, I, th I think is going to be great. Thank you for that, Erin. That's nice to hear your firsthand experience with that. Other questions or comments? I can return to goal three. Um, this is regarding our engagement. And one of the benefits that did come through with the pandemic is people's comfort level of being virtual and people's comfort level of being on screen. Um, so one of the things that we needed to do this year was instead of having our families come into the classroom physically, they were willing to start joining virtually. And whether that was as a mystery reader or as a guest, um, we were also able to start having families share their cultural differences and use them as great conversations in the classroom and as education to focus and showcase on our differences and about how that makes us a richer community. And that will be continuing, we'll be archiving much of this work um, and moving forward with that. As well, we're hoping to bring back our cultural nights of where we have families come together to share, share a traditional meal, learn some information about um, one of the varied cultures in our community, and then also participate in an activity that's connected to them as well. We will continue to work with our outside groups connected to our town to enhance this and to figure new ways to make these connections and stronger. Uh, it is another beautiful part about the K through two school is the kids are very excited to share their backgrounds and to learn more about their friends' backgrounds. Any questions regarding this goal?
And finally, goal four is to champion educator excellence, um, providing PD and collaborative planning to enhance instruction, working with our teachers where it's about looking at the data and what is the data showing us for what their students do well that we can continue with, what are our students struggling with and what adjustments do we make instructionally to support our students. Um, the literacy coach is going to be a key component in this, but not the only. And it will not be that this will be the only person that will be delivering this information. It will be continued to be this collaborative approach um, from myself, Kate, our reading specialist, and the expertise that we have with our staff as well by working with each other and supporting their strategies with one another. We'll continue to work with our local colleges, um, at least in the five years that I've been here. I've been thrilled that each year we've had many student teachers that continue to work with us in our school and receive some great training from our amazing educators. This also just creates a great relationship with the universities um, of where we're attracting more candidates as well. Any questions regarding goal four? I'll pass over the sh screen sharing to Sarah as our council does split um, of where we do work together, but as we get into building specific decisions and positions, um, the Pitaway and the Warren group do split at times. Thanks, Pete. Um, so a lot of our work was very similar. Um, I'll get our screen share going. Can everyone see that? I kind of jumped right to the accomplishments. Um, because for us over um, the last five years, our goal has really been um, to provide an inclusive preschool program um, and continue to align as a pre-K through 12 um, district and really um, embed ourselves as the fifth building. Um, and I'm really proud of what we've done over the last few years. And our previous school improvement plan was from 2018 to 2021. Um, so, just a little bit on the accomplishments. Um, we our three goal areas were um, a lot related to curriculum and that alignment of the K through five, specifically the elementary school curriculum. Um, as most preschool programs are kind of homegrown and created, and they're often theme based and super hands on and engaging and lots of fun. But we've really worked at trying to align that and have a scope and sequence that's carrying through some important foundational skills and building upon that and really providing some consistent language for kids so that they are familiar with it and they've had that exposure before they get to kindergarten. So um, in 2018 and 2019, we um, really did a reboot of our PBIS to align um, you know, with core values and just um, what that positive behavior and, and support systems look like. Um, Pitaway has the beehives, you've probably seen them around. Um, we have be kind and be safe. This year we added be healthy um, with some wearing your masks, um, washing your hands and um, staying a safe distance um, from each other. And we've continued to kind of reboot that and provide a lot of resources for parents around teaching how to increase your mask tolerance and really working on those parent resources um, so that kids could feel comfortable coming back to school with us. Um, so that was a great accomplishment and it continues to build on every year. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yep. Would you, I, I'd love for you to give the example uh, from the beginning of the year of, of one of our students uh, with the mask wearing and the initiative there with that one child, I, I, just over a week period of time, I think folks need yeah. to, to really realize the, the, the energy and the, the focus of the teachers as well on what you had to do. And it was, it was really just outstanding. Yeah, I think that came from a lot of the reopening task force. A lot of our families indicated um, that they hadn't even tried wearing masks. Um, and, you know, at one point it wasn't recommended for kids under a certain age. And then as we looked at our, re our district reopening, it was going to be a blanket pre-K through um, 12, as well as staff and families too. Um, and without going anywhere, there wasn't a lot of practice. So um, the Pitaway staff, which we affectionately call the Pit Crew, did a fabulous job developing resources to share with families about social stories about mask wearing, finding the mask in the right material that worked well for your kiddos, changing those frequently because they get wet and, uh, or you forget and you drink your water bottle through it. Um, and then also how to reinforce building that tolerance um, and practicing wearing it. So we had um, quite a few students that had never worn their masks and the staff were absolutely incredible for building that tolerance and reinforcing and celebrating those five seconds at a time. Um, 
and getting B stickers or getting a dance party or lots of praise or just the thumbs up um, to students that now can wear them throughout the day. Um, and their families are able to go out in public as they felt that it was getting safer um, to go to the grocery store and things like that. So that parent education component, which typically like Pete said, the earlier ages, we bring them in for everything. We had to find new ways to engage on a more personal level of what they needed and what they were struggling with at home and then how we could provide those teaching moments um, or coaching moments for parents to get that practice. Um, we also um, developed our own preschool um, physical education curriculum. We don't have specials over at the, um, at the pre-K level. So we looked at our preschool um, and physical education standards throughout the state. Um, we worked with the Warren School to kind of align with a scope and sequence. And we've developed a curriculum in 2018. We implemented it with the committee that was homegrown from our own members of the pit crew, then provided the training throughout the year um, to implement it. And then even this year, we had to change some of the scope and sequence based on how we address the curriculum. But we were able to um, include that as well throughout um, their learning while they were here with us. Um, and we also developed an RTI model, the response to intervention and a student support team um, during that 2018 to 2021 um, period, which was not established here at the Pittaway School. So that was something that again, um, was a lot of educators, professional practice goals to learn about RTI and what that meant at the preschool level. And um, it's really built our collaboration to have really good conversations about teaching and learning and how every kid might have a different support plan. Um, and really individualize their instruction. The, uh, uh, I think it was the third goal was family engagement. We always worked on, um, the, uh, we have an incredible PTO that plans family events once a month. That obviously has come to a huge halt. Um, so we had to get creative with um, teaching our families how to use Google Classroom for preschool age kiddos. Kids got student emails for um, the first time, thanks to our wonderful IT department to kind of house those resources and activities um, and um, provide experiences where they could come in as mystery readers or provide a tradition or a cultural experience. Um, and our families did a really great job with that. Even though we were in person, our buildings were still closed throughout the year. So um, they got really creative and um, it's been a nice way. We do hope that we can return to a little more normal um, activity in the fall um, and we'll continue to focus on providing those opportunities. So then if we go all the way up to this year, I'm kind of looking at um, starting a new three-year plan for us um, and really continuing that mission to align with um, the rest of the district and looking at our curriculum and how can we improve our curriculum. Um, we've got our PBIS framework solid. Um, and working well, but as Pete mentioned, and Claudia's um, building has been doing it as well, that responsive classroom training. So we worked with Mike's office to kind of have some teachers take that opportunity this summer to learn the training and then do some workshop models to train the other educators in the building so that we can include some of those important um, features and um, components and language in the curriculum um, across our setting at the preschool level. Um, we also are gonna utilize a curriculum leader, which Pitaway has not had, thanks to Mike's office, um, to really help kind of embed ourselves um, in the vertical teaming that goes on. Um, so there'll be a pre-K representative when we start to think about ELA and math curriculum and um, how we can make sure that we're supporting that curriculum development and those foundational skills for our earliest learners. Um, so those are kind of our action items we're looking for. Um, the pit crew is incredible in a workshop model through professional development. I can say that's probably one of the things that I'm most proudest about. Um, they love to learn from each other um, and it's really nice to see leaders um, come from within and show their knowledge in different areas. Um, and I can see this as a, a really nice opportunity for peer mentoring and coaching and modeling um, and learning from each other um, as we start to embed that over the next couple of years. Any questions on that one? Goal two for us is to review um, really the ELA curriculum because we know that they've started that implementation. We're still using um, the pre-K model of Journeys and Houghton Mifflin. So um, 
you know, we've started to modify and change our curriculum mapping a little bit, but we would like to, um, again, engage in those conversations at a vertical level so that we can get those important foundational skills, um, you know, embedded within our curriculum. Uh, the phonics component would be phenomenal at the pre-K level. So I look forward to that over the next year or two um, in, in purchasing any curriculum materials that we need. Um, we haven't done that in a few years. So I think that that would be nice to really challenge ourselves to look at what literacy we have available um, kind of feeds into the next one about um, developing a school culture and making sure it's full of rich um, and diverse experiences. Um, we've worked with site council this, this year, really thinking about making sure we're being reflective of our um, materials, our toys, our lessons, our um, representation in literacy and those sort of things. Um, and the site council, the PTO have been wonderful with that. And also our recent connection with the community groups such as area um, to really look at some other resources that we can really embed um, in our everyday curriculum that will provide children with more exposure um, as they learn to love school and love their community and their classmates. And the last goal for us is meaningful professional development. I kind of just hit on that um, workshop model that our preschool team does so well. Um, we had hoped to do a workshop model for parents as well. I think that's really gonna be needed coming out of the pandemic as well, because um, we're gonna be back to negotiating how to play and how to be part of a group and how to um, share. And those things are different than when you're with your siblings and you're at home. So we'd like to think about, um, you know, a fall series where we can kind of support families through that as they re-engage in school and more social interactions in the community, um, as well as, you know, continue with the curriculum department, um, at responsive classrooms, foundations over the next couple of years, um, so that we'll be able to implement those um, just to continue to kind of be the stepping stones as they get ready to go into um, K through five. So I think those are our four for the next three years. Any questions? Question. Oh. Question. I heard something. <laughs> I just have a quick question, Sarah. You touched on in the beginning kind of the inclusivity of the preschool. What is the ratio that the preschool is at right now? So pre-COVID, post-COVID, it's kind of a different world. This year, we were really proud to not go into a hybrid model because preschoolers need that consistency. So we um, identified our enrollment to run four days in person. So all of our class sizes are under 10. Um, and our ratio, um, we strive to be like a 70-30 ratio of peer partners or who we call community kiddos that tuition in to students that may have a unique profile that might need some kind of special education through speech and language or OT or PT. Um, towards the end of the year in our referrals that those numbers change, but that's kind of our goal. So moving into fall enrollment, what we're planning on and we've enrolled all of our peer partners um, and we're pretty close to full, which is great. Um, and we'll go back to 15 students in a classroom with a teacher and a teaching assistant, all duly certified. Um, which is another huge accomplishment for us over the last couple of years. And um, our ratio will be eight peer partners to up to seven students needing some sort of support. Um, and that varies based on each individual kid. Okay. That's great. Thank yeah. you. So I, I don't have a question. No, you go. Just a clarification, Sarah, on, on what you said in terms of ratios. So the 70-30 um, ratio is 30% um, peer partners? No, 70% peer partners and up to 30% students identified on an IEP for various okay. reasons. And, and then, so what is it, you, when you said it goes back to 15, it's like eight and seven? So then Which, the ratio will change? Mm -hmm. That's so the true. regulation. So we always start with eight peer partners because that would max out the room. Um, okay. And then our students identified with special needs, we generally start the class small in the fall because those referrals come in throughout the year right. um, or as students turn three and that becomes the school district's responsibility to provide those services as they're deemed eligible. So we want to hold those slots. And so as, as we go through those ratios, is that sufficient for us to support all the students that do need services? 
that's our hope. Um, you know, we're, we are adding a, a new section for next year based on the early intervention referrals um, and needs that we have. Um, we always kind of struggle with um, the need for half day programming versus full day programming for peer partners. Um, but this year um, we've been full in, in both of those settings, um, which is great. And I think parents are feeling a little more comfortable next thinking about the fall and thinking about um, starting to have some sort of school experience where this year we had a lot of families, um, you know, choose whether they had a unique profile and needing special education or if they just chose to, to be at home due to the pandemic, um, our, our numbers significantly were reduced. Thank you. Very well. So I didn't really have a question more, just wanted to, you know, say thank you and congratulations because I don't think it, a lot of people understand the transformation you've you've done over there in the past three or four years. You went from, you know, a preschool that, you know, did what they're supposed to do, but it wasn't inclusive, right? And and the transformation and you've you faced all the changes you've made haven't been popular with everyone. You faced a lot of headwinds and by far in the district, that that building has transformed and changed more than than any other. So, um, you know, when we when we talk about inclusion and being inclusive preschool, most people don't really know what that means, and that we weren't really living up to that before. And and now that we are, it's it's a big accomplishment. So, congratulations. Thank you, and thanks for your support. But the staff have been incredible, and um, it's something we all should be really proud of in the community of Ashland. Other questions or comments for Sarah? Or Pete, before we wrap this up, thank you both for those excellent presentations and the good work going on in your buildings. And we don't need a vote. So we can move on to our next agenda item, which is assistant superintendent update, Mike, if you have one. I just wanted to fill you in that we have um, put out put out the request for summer curriculum work proposals to our staff. Uh, really excited that we've already received two great proposals from uh, folks. One folk, one at the, from the high school to be looking at some of the work that we do in the area of English, and uh, one also from the middle school in the area of English as well. So we'll be taking those until June fourth, and I'm excited to see what the proposals come in as we as we you know try to improve our instructional practices and improve the curriculum offerings for our students. So we'll keep you posted on, on what we'll be doing for the summer there. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions about that? Comments? Thank you, Mike. Okay, warrant approvals. I don't know if we were able to get that. Jim, were we What's oh, the status? Yeah. So here's the status. <laughs> we, we need to elect someone uh, yeah. who, from, the, from the committee uh, to, to be the willing person to come in and sign uh, the warrants. And as soon as tomorrow, actually, um, because we do have a set of warrants that need to be signed uh, for payroll, et cetera. But it's a very simple process. You end up just reading a statement uh, at the school committee meeting saying you approve this on behalf of the, of the district. Um, but we do need someone to step up and uh, go in tomorrow. Jim, does it involve dropping by weekly or is it every other week? Chris. Chris. Right, right, now, it's, right now we're uh, doing it electronically, so it's through a Google Sheet. Right. Oh. Um, so. so nobody has to come to the building. I don't know if that'll change. This is, this is COVID related. Um, oh. So I think past practice, um, it has been a hard copy. Um, it, it can stay this way, great. I just don't know. Um, so I don't I, I don't want to promise what happens in three months. <laughs> no, sure, I understand. But Chris, is the frequent... Does Mark, have you heard anything about changes to the law of what, um, as far as these accommodations? Aaron, you're, 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 yeah. you're, kind of, you're kind of breaking up a little bit, Aaron. Got the gist of the question. Any changes to the law potentially with regard to Zoom meetings versus in-person? Is that, Aaron, sort of where you're headed? Yeah, I haven't heard of any changes yet, Aaron. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. On your end, Jim. I haven't heard anything either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, it, it's, it's an interesting thing because he's saying that the state of emergency is going to, you know, and, be up in June. Right. And so 
it's in, unclear whether he's also going to, you know, repeal the things that he put in place as part of that, right? So. So yeah, I think I mean the the uh, press release the governor put out made reference to, as Paul says, the uh, state of emergency ending on June fifteenth. And I believe I'm not, I haven't gone back and checked this, but I, I believe that the um, a lot of the executive orders that went into place were specifically put in place until the state of emergency ends. And so the press release only commented that they would work with sort of government stakeholders to try to find a transition back to the way it used to be. But I don't I don't think there's going to be there's no immediate basis for us to continue virtually potentially after June 15th. Um, I haven't seen anything definitive and I haven't looked at it myself yet, but um, we may not be able to do that, at least not right now. If it follows their MO, they, they'll let us know on the 14th, right? Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> but back to Lori's question yeah. to Chris, is it weekly or bi-weekly, Chris? Uh, it's uh, bi-weekly. Bi-weekly. And Chris, can you re is it the same all through the summer or does it uh, slow down during the summer? No, I think I think it has to be ready for uh, for payroll. And um, you know what? I want to pause. I don't know if we do the warrants weekly. The payroll is bi-weekly. And I'd have to look to see how the frequency of a warrant. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, uh, you know. I, um, but we only vote them when Cap, you know, when Cappy's at the meeting. Right, so, so it'd be bi-weekly. Right, we only addressed it at the well, 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 no, we she never we'll approve it. We never, we never vote it. All she has to do is report right. it. Right. Right, but it, whether whether or not she had to go in weekly or biweekly is what we don't know. Right. right. I can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> so, having heard all of that, is there anybody who wants to volunteer for that? Not a soul. All right. Hearing none. I will do it. <laughs> I was going to say, if, if nobody wants it, it's either you or me, right? I work from home. I, you know, as soon as COVID's over, I'll probably be in with Jim a couple of times, you know, anyway. So whatever. Got it. I will be happy to do that. So do, I think we need to make a motion to designate you as the person to sign our warrants. Yes. Yeah, to, to authorize you. Yeah. yeah. So I, I move that um, we authorize Laurie to sign the warrants on behalf of the pool committee. Second. Second. All in favor, Aaron? Aye. Aye. Mark? Aye. Tina? Aye. Paul? Aye. And thank you, Lori. Hey. Yes, thank you, Lori. So do we, how do we need to handle whatever Kathy signed off on before the election? I need to election? go to there, there, there is nothing, Mark. There's nothing? OK. We have one that needs to be signed tomorrow. OK. Yeah. So. Chris, so I, can I, we can, I can share that with you via Google Sheet. Uh, uh, tomorrow morning, if that's convenient for you. Yes, absolutely. Catherine okay. just said every couple of weeks. Yep. Bi-weekly. So. Okay. So, Chris, I'll be getting an email from you just yes, with you the will. next. Okay. Yep. I will look for that. Thank you. Okay. Next up, minutes. April 15th. Uh, we have... Do, 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 we, do we have a, a suggested uh, altercation? Uh, <laughs> we did, but in relation know. to that, or <laughs> only the one that Ms. Bates. Do you just want to strike the the the, the word, or <laughs> I want to see you excited first. Yeah, exactly. This is it right here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hearing no other changes to that one. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of April 15th? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Paul? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Aye. No? Aye. Mark? Aye. And then the minutes of April 30th, 2021? And, and, and you were an I as well, Lori, right? Yes. Did I not? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any changes on the next one, April 30th? And I don't hear any, and I don't have any, so I'll take a motion. Move to approve the minutes of April 30th. Second. All in favor, Tina? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Aye. Mark? Aye. Paul? Aye. Aye for me as well. And then finally, May 6th, 2021. Any issues there? 
Move to approve the minutes of uh, May 6th, 2021. Second. All in favor, Aaron? Aye. Aye. Tina? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I for me. Thank you. And Jim, do we have gifts and donations? We do not. We do not tonight. Okay. How about member updates? Who's got some? Anybody want to go first? Um, I'll just share briefly. I won't get into the election stuff. Obviously, that was kind of busy for a couple of us this past week. But um, last week, I went with um, both Tina and, and Mike were also present at the um, school-based meeting of area, that subcommittee. And uh, it was another good meeting. Uh, Paul, there was actually one takeaway that I meant to reach out to you privately on, but uh, maybe you can just let me know either here or later. There was a question about how we're doing on a review of policies, um, sort of for the purpose of, of evaluating their equity basis. And, and um, I advised them that we look at policies over the long term. I didn't know if there were any specific policies that we needed to review, um, sort of in terms of policy statements about equity and providing an equitable education. Um, but I did say that I would follow up with, with you as the chair of the policy subcommittee, um, just to see where we were with that work. I don't know if you want to follow up with me offline or, or you can provide a you know, quick answer on that one. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I, I invite them if, if anyone uh, sees anything that uh, that they see any any kind of modifications might need to be made or they, they don't, um, they want us to address it. But every time we do address, we, we certainly focus heavily on equity uh, on from, from all directions of equity, right? Um, whether it be our, we've had a lot of conversations during like we, when we did the transportation one, um, you know, we, we, we thought about those, um, but uh, we definitely do that. And we, we would certainly invite anyone who has uh, a perspective on it that wants to share. Uh, we, we can invite uh, someone from area to, to one of the meetings to, you know, as we go through that and see if they want to ha have some feedback um, also, I, I don't, I haven't seen anything from MASC, but maybe they, maybe that's something you can bring up with MASC. As you know, we, yeah. we base a lot of our stuff on their, their templates, right? So I don't know if that's an initiative that the MASC should undertake is, uh, via that lens, go through their, their standard template of, of yeah. policies, because I think that form us directionally because you know, we have a lot of them. Um, so and I mean, it might be time to go try to go through them. Like Lori, when, when was the last time it was totally went through? That was. It, it's been years. Maybe I'd say like maybe like eight, like eight seven. years, probably seven or eight years. Yeah. yeah, it was. I knew it was just before I got on uh, on the committee. So. Um, yeah. So I'll check in with MASC. I think they they had completed a review of all their policies within the last year. Um, but I'm not sure whether that predates the sort of more current thinking, I guess, about yeah. issues of equity. Yeah, well, uh, that's there, a great point. I will follow up with them. Yeah, because um, that that certainly that that helps more than just Ashland, right? If they can yeah. if they can look at it with that lens. All right, thank you. Um, so the only other thing I'll share from that meeting was there's a lot of discussion about um, communication with the community about some events there was some we had some good conversation just about understanding how our communications on issues like um the one that's been in hopkinton involving um michaela and her death um and so we had some good conversation and yielded some, some good perspective on that um which i shared with um with my well, mike was present and i talked with jim about that as well afterwards um and the last thing um, they'll just mention quickly is um, the, our, our division of the MASC, which is Division Two, um, is pairing up with Division Four, which is um, sort of the 495 Belt and West, um, out to Worcester, Northern Worcester County, that kind of area. Um, to have a program on Monday about making well general goals related to diversity, equity, and inclusion actionable, and we have um, representatives from Acton, Boxborough, Framingham, and Chelsea. They're going to come in and talk a little bit about their district's work and what they're actually doing to move their their efforts in those areas forward. Um, so I've been working on on that um, with Michelle Bodenhettinger, who's 
I'm on the school committee in Marlboro and the Division Four representative. And um, from, from what I understand, we have about 135 people already signed up for it. Um, it's certainly open to every school committee member in the state, even though it's being put on by Division Two and Four. Um, so if you have the opportunity to participate in that and hear what some other districts are doing, I certainly encourage people to do so. That's it. That's all I have. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Mark, if you can uh, bring it back to to one of the meetings that if if they want to have some uh, to join us in some when we do have to address some policies, mm -hmm. uh, certainly you know I invite their input. Uh, if they have if they have an interest, I can you know obviously share with you the ones we're reviewing at any particular yep. point in time, and and certainly any they're public meetings, obviously, but we would certainly welcome their input. Yeah, I will. I'll follow up with them by email. They actually are, are kind of suspending the school subcommittee's um, work. I think until then, towards the end of the summer is the last meeting of the school year. Uh, but I told them I would follow up by email, so I will pass that along. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else before I give my long email <laughs> <laughs> Um I, I think I had mentioned. Uh, to, to the group before. So we were originally planning on submitting our um, design development package to the MSBA uh, two weeks ago today. Uh, in fact, we were supposed to do that. Uh, but we had the fortune of going out to our last, our last round of estimating during uh, an incredible bubble in the construction market. Uh, literally almost overnight, things like uh, structural steel tripled in price. Uh, and you know rebar and and all these construction materials just went crazy uh, for lots of different reasons. Some of which was the, the stimulus and a lot of other uh, things in, in the market going to bid at the same time. And so uh, the problem is that that's all well and good, pumping money in is great, but you know, the realization is uh, all the steel factories and, 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 and mills and different things that had slowed and shut down over uh, during the pandemic, they were able to sustain the, the projects that were continuing, but this flood, they're, they're just not ramped up yet. So uh, long story short, that, that put us uh, you know, over budget as, a, as a related to the estimate. So we had to put a pause on, on that submission. And, and I really wanna thank the team uh, you know, Compass, uh, Flansburg, and Shamit, they put in a, a truckload of work over the last two weeks trying to, to get us back on budget, find ways we can uh, accelerate the value engineering that would be occurring as we do, uh, refine the, the design anyway. Um, we'd be going through there and they'd be saying, okay, as we refine this design, we can, we can tweak this here, save money here, do these different things. Well, we had to condense what would happen over the course of a couple months into a couple of days, really. Um, and so good news is we were able to get back on budget with things that I think the only changes uh, that we did, the only people that would know are the, are the committee. So that the, all the programming, all the, all the things that people have been seeing and, 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 and wanting uh, have, have, have stayed. So we had a meeting last night where we, we got to uh, the end of job on that. And so uh, we have a couple of committee members on on here tonight, so I want to thank the the, the building committee too. It was two long meetings. Uh, the first one was over three, I think three hours, and and last night was was two, and that was that was a quicker meeting. So uh, to go through our value engineering list, I can't recall how many items were on there, but somewhere around sixty, I think, um, that we had to go through evaluate. And, and do that. So long story short, we're, we're back. Uh, last night we voted to appro approve the submission to, of the DD report and we'll go to uh, through permitting next month. Uh, and you know, even with that delay, some of the changes that were made help us stay on schedule for uh, hopefully breaking ground in October, November. So long-winded, but uh, that's, that's kind of the, the last two weeks have been a little bit of a a mess when it comes to that stuff, so. Thank you, Paul. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, Paul, just, I guess my question in terms of the, the estimates and just sort of how it all plays out going forward, you know, is there a possibility that the, um, that the market corrects back to something that 
you know, makes that all more affordable or closer to what we expected that allows you to reincorporate whatever modifications that you made. Yeah. Um, you know, is that, is that, is that feasible in the way this project works? Yeah, so so it's a good question. And the answer, short answer is yes. Uh, so there's a couple of things that went in there and this is kind of the challenge of doing the value engineering list. There, depending on what we're talking about, things, some things we accept and they'll never come back because we can't carry them as what we're calling ad alternates. So where we accept a change, but we would like to reincorporate our original thing. So things like that would include if it really is a substantive change to the design such that in order to carry as an adult, the design team would actually have to have two sets of drawings uh, or three sets of drawings or however many alternates we're talking about. So um, those would, that would be a, a reason why we wouldn't be able to. I mean, the good news is the things that fall into that category that we, uh, we decided to accept as, uh, as changes, uh, they weren't substantive from that perspective. They weren't functional. They were, you know, one of the biggest things um, the, the design team was able to do was they were able to do slight modifications to the, to the actual building to, to kind of bring it a little bit in and shift it away from the, the hill. Because we were going into the hill, which was intentional. Uh, it has lots of benefits to do that, but saving on some of that earthwork and, and getting it a little bit further out of the hill helped save some costs, but it also um, made the footprint of the building slightly uh, smaller, the square, same square footage, but it kind of made two sides come together a little bit differently. And so um, that's, an, that's an example of a seven figure savings we were able to uh, have in the project um, that really didn't, the only people that would know, uh, I mean, somebody that maybe looked at a plan that we showed before could notice it, but really nobody would notice that. Um, so we have a lot of things we've labeled as ad alternates, and there's two ways we can get that back in. Right now, we need to balance it, as is um, with the construction budget. We need it to align. As we go into bidding, we can keep things as ad alternates. And even if the market hadn't softened, which I expect it to soften, we, we hit, you know, we hit Yahtzee. It, 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 was, it was a mess. The, the, it was a huge bubble. Um, I expect it to soften, but does it soften all the way back to where, where our original estimate was? Mm, probably not. Uh, so the, when it softens, we can add it back in at, at bid day, but we also then have access at that point to the owner's contingency. So we have a healthy owner's contingency on this because we knew we were going through this time. So we have $2.9 million of owner's contingency. So as we put things in add alt, at that point, when we, we carry them to bid time, we can uh, we have the option to use those funds. Right now, we can't earmark or, or use those funds to balance it. Um, so, so, so the answer that's a long-winded way to say yes. So that that's exactly the approach we took. Um, is there are some things that we decided to take and won't come back, uh, but none of those uh, aren't things we we can't live with, and that probably aside from the building committee, wouldn't even notice that there was a change. Uh, I guess the other, the other thing is um, next week, we will be uh, meeting with the abutters and neighbors. Uh, we have two separate meetings where they'll, we'll be introducing them to the project team. So obviously we're gonna be, uh, you know, neighbors with them as a project for the next several years. And uh, we wanna be good neighbors. so that's gonna start an ongoing dialogue with them. So they'll meet the CM um, and Shamit and, and the whole project team and we'll start that dialogue and, and, and really it'll, it'll continue through closeout. Um, you know, so that we have, we wanna be cognizant of we're neighbors and, and we're, we're, the, we're the visitors in there as it relates to the project. So, um, and, and I think we've got a great team that, that has done, uh, done it all before and, and can address the concerns. So we have, Two meetings, one for the the abutters, and then one for the uh, to, for the more uh, overall neighborhood around around Mendez next week. And so, Lori, I'll probably reach out to you at some point. It probably makes sense for uh, us to invite the project team in and give an uh, give an update in this forum too, right? So we're at a point now where the design is being further developed, and we're going for permitting uh, to the planning board next month. 
So, um, so I'll That's do that. I'll do that at some point. So, you, here, Paul, you, I think we only have a couple more meetings left, right? Yeah. So, so let, let, let's figure that out. Um, okay. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But uh, I think it's probably important for this group to to be introduced to, to Sham. I mean, you, you, most of you. I mean, uh, uh, Tina's obviously uh, not been at our previous meetings, but uh, you've all otherwise met. Uh, the design team and everybody, but Shamit's the, the 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 new group, and and they're they're the boots on the ground, so they're the construction managers. So I think it'll be important to introduce at some point. Oh, sure. Sounds good. Any other questions or comments for Paul based on that information? Yeah, and 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 thanks again to to the project team, but also the the, the building committee. We we have a lot of construction professionals on there, and. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's the project it is because we have the group we have, so. Yeah, and I, and I should say too, Tina, I'm sorry, I'm on my phone now, so I haven't figured out how to see all your faces, but, so I'm talking to you, Tina, and I can't see you, but um, when, you've been watching our meeting, so you, you probably figured this out, but just so you know, when we get to this part of the meeting, uh, we go around and the members, as well as our student representative, if they're here, um, share information, anything you want to share with us about what you've been doing, whether you've gone to any meetings or anything going on around town that you want the rest of the committee to hear about. So um, you can feel free to join in tonight if you have something you want to add or just so that you know for the future, um, you're welcome to share. And if there's not anything going on or nothing you want to share, that's okay too. You're, you're on mute, Tina. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have any updates to give, but I do want to volunteer to be the new representative to ASHPAC um, in, in Kathy's departure. So I don't know if that's something that needs an official motion or whatnot, but I'm happy to volunteer to, to be that liaison. Yeah, so, and I'm happy to support that. I guess the only thing we have to figure out, it, since it's not in the agenda, to appoint anybody for that. Uh, and we usually appoint people to committees during our summer retreat, okay. but, uh, but I'll, I, I also, um, let me see if I can figure out how to see all the people here. If <laughs> Kathy's here. Yeah, or Diane, and, and Diane is here too. Still Diane, still too. If, if you would like, some, if you're meeting um, again before the end of the year and you would like a liaison, then we can get that done sooner rather than later or um, we can make an appointment over the summer. But, but either way, Tina, I'm, I'm certain that it can be you. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it properly. Yeah, just to say, um, um, thanks for the um, comment. So we are going to schedule one more meeting for the year. Um, Tina is welcome to come, whether or not she is appointed um, fr from you and as just a community member, our meetings are open to the public as well. So it can wait till your summer retreat if that's how you do it. Um, so officially um, welcome her to that position. Um, but she, I can send the, the information once we um, officially schedule the meeting. Okay, so that sounds like a good plan. If you're able to get to that meeting, Tina, feel free to go and we'll put in our, whenever we're meeting next, which uh, I'm guessing is probably next Friday, um, we'll take the vote. Sound good? <laughs> Everybody okay? Jim's uncertain of the Friday thing, but <laughs> oh, are we not Friday? No, no. I thought we were going to have dialogue with regard to our Fridays needed anymore. But I don't know if it's zero. Probably not, right? <laughs> so, but 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 either way, I, I, th I think that's a good plan. I you know whether you're on the official or not, you can certainly fill that role, right? right. Well, since we're all here and it's the only time we're all going to be together before next Friday. Uh, what are your thoughts on meeting next week on Friday? We know what you think, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to weigh in on that? I don't, I don't think need, it's necessary. I, I don't need it. I, I, I'd like, I'd like. We to have a meeting anyway, Friday. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I already have a couple of meetings on Friday morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I would, no, I mean, I, I would say I, I, you could always post it and if something warrants it, we can do it, but it, I just don't want to jinx anything. I'll knock on wood and say I don't see that we're going to need it. Um, I can't imagine there's going to be something that changes so substantially that, that we have to make a district-wide decision. And if there's something that occurs in the single building, that's been you know, Jim's call, building principles all year long anyway. So I think, I, I think we can forego it. 
I mean, I guess Stephen's on here. Is there anything that we're going to need to change or vote on from a athletics perspective next week? No, we're okay. open. What's that? No, we're okay. Open. Yep. All right. That was the only other thing I want to make sure we didn't lose sight of. But Tina, do you have any input on that? Nope, I'm fine with whatever everyone else is. I haven't had to do all those Friday meetings. So whatever the group needs to do, I'm on board with. And it sounds like you never will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect timing. Yeah, yeah right. So, and so, and, and um, Lori, I know you can't see everyone. Um, Raheem is on. I don't know if, if he has any um, update he wanted to give. Raheem? Hi. There he is. Hi. Is there anything that's going on at school? So right now, a lot of students are taking MCAS. So a lot of sophomores and juniors are taking MCAS. So tomorrow's the last day for that. Um, anyone who wants to like play sports has to also come into school. So right now we only have like uh, all the sophomores and most of the juniors in school. Um, also like AP season is going on. So a lot of uh, juniors and seniors and maybe like sophomores that are uh, taking a lot of like AP exams. So I think that's going to go on to like the beginning of June. Um, what else? Spring sports. So a lot of uh, teams have been like proceeding with like a regular spring sports season. I know it's like a little like condensed, but um, they're still getting like a lot of uh, their games in and practices. Um, and then just uh, general elections are going on. So uh, students are rerunning or running for uh, positions in class and student council. Um, and yeah, that's all that's going on. Excellent, thank you. Anybody else? All right, looks like we're at the end. Action items are the same as what they've been. Uh, no meeting next Friday, it sounds like, right, Jim? No, we're gonna go with that. Sounds like that's the consensus. As well as tomorrow. Well, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow's off. And uh, moving forward, we're not gonna have it on the schedule unless things change and we can always add it back. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn if there's nothing else. So moved. Second. All in favor, Paul? Aye. Mark? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Yeah. Tina? Aye. And I for me. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Bye.